Hi, you're about ready to start writing an essay about American values. But this is not an essay like essays you may have written in the past, five paragraph essays. Each paragraph has a main point supporting your main point. No, you are writing a personal essay. It's a story about yourself. This is creative nonfiction. You are crafting something that somebody will want to read. It will still have a main point, but it's going to make that main point differently. So let's talk about some of the essays you've been reading in this class. Koenig's essay. Koenig's essay is an example of a personal essay. He had something to, he wanted to say. He wanted to raise his voice. His visit to Standing Rock made him want to speak up. He wanted to defend the people, the land, and the water. And he had to ask, what is the best way to do that? That's rhetoric. I have something to say. I want to raise my voice. How do I do that? What are the available means of persuasion? How do I defend the land? How do I call attention to the situation? How can I identify with the people? And in order to achieve his purpose, he asked the question, what did I find in Standing Rock? And he addressed a group of people that he had some credibility with because Koenig is a basketball player. He was a key player for Wisconsin um, and he had some credibility with sports fans. And so he chose to write for the Players Tribune. This point, you have read three essays that reflect to or appeal to American values in some way in order to allow their authors to raise their voices. They all had arguments, they were persuasive, but none of these essays were combative. They reflected values in order to connect with audiences, but they weren't preachy and they weren't teachy. The audiences could be persuaded because of the rhetorical strategies that the authors used, because of the stories that the authors told. Each one of the essays responds to an ongoing situation in America. Each one of these essays reviews the situation, and then the author builds their claim. Each one of these essays utilizes the author's own identities and experiences in order to build a main point. I'm going to emphasize that. As you were reading, you felt like you knew um, Brandon um, Bronson Koenig. You felt like you knew. Um, James McBride or Harriet Mc... McBride Johnson. Yeah, that was just, I didn't realize they were both McBride. They spell their names different. You felt like you knew these authors. Each of these authors appeals to or subverts American values, probably does both in order to appeal to an American audience. And they all have American audiences. In many cases, the authors add their own values that might conflict with values Alphen introduces. So Bronson Koenig said, how do, I, how do I defend the land? That was an inquiry question he started with. Our focus is on values the values often describes as uniquely American and the values you have. Those might be the same, they might be different. They probably are different in some ways because Alton was making generalities about Americans at the turn of the century. So I want you to start with a value. Let's say equality. What question, what general inquiry question can you ask about equality? Um, you might ask, what does equality mean to me? How have I experienced inequality? Why do I care about equality? And now you answer. And you probably have some basic answers like, 
all people are created equal, the Constitution, it's just right. But I want you to really dig deeply. And in order to do that, I don't want you to start your question with an obvious answer. Think about if you're reading, the obvious answer isn't very interesting. Joan Didion, who writes a lot of personal essays, says, I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, it, what I see and what it means. And so if you were writing about equality, you might say, what is equality? Why does equality matter? And you should look for an answer. Now, in order to illustrate this idea, I want to present to you um, my colleague, a lecturer um, in the RWS department, who um, she's a poet, she's a writer, and she wrote about literacy. What does literacy mean to me? And she wrote an article titled Joyous Survival, The Literacy of the Hillside Strangler and Anything Extra We Know. And if you're thinking, what? What does she mean, the literacy of the Hillside Strangler? And you've got questions going on in your mind. You don't have to read this story. I didn't feel like it really reflected American values very much. Um, but it illustrates some ideas. So Kelly Linfor described the process of writing a um, personal essay. And she had a lot of different things that you would do. Start with an entry question. That's the start thing. And research details, think in images, think about the detail settings, um, describe people, allow new questions to arise, think about your identity, circle back, ask new questions, create characters. Let me show you what she means. So. Her question is, what does literacy mean to me? And she just brainstormed, boom, boom, boom. It means reading, it means access to information, it means a knowledge of a world beyond myself. Those are obvious answers. And so she goes, if I wanna write something interesting, I have to have something interesting to say. So she said, let me go a little deeper. The power to control ideas through writing. That's literacy. Learning is literacy. Listening is literacy. Okay. She says, but those are still pretty obvious. And so she went deeper than that. Watching, storytelling. And then she added literacy is surrendering and recovering. Now she's got some interesting ideas. So as you're asking, what does equality mean to me? Name the things that it means, but go deeper below to the obvious. And obviously you don't have to do equality. We've got time, we've got achievement, we've got competition. So those ideas prompted new questions for Callie. When did my literacy form? What did I read? What stories was I told? What stories did I watch? What did I listen to? And then she had to answer because she needed stories. So as she's saying, when did my literacy form? She recalled she couldn't read and she could barely write until late third grade. Um, Kelly had dyslexia. She asked, what did I read? Well, she read Swiss Family Robinson, Hatchet, Baby Island, Island of the Blue Dolphins. And then she asked, what do these books have in common? Well, there were feral children, they were survival stories, they were stories about independence and taking control. And she asked herself a new question because you wanna always answer new questions. Ask and answer. She goes, why was I so fascinated with feral children or survival? And so she went back to her questions. What stories was I told? 
Um, you know, she watched stuff on TV. Um, and beyond that, she learned about the Hillside Strangler by watching TV when she was five years old. Yes. What stories was I told? Well, her grandmother and her mother told her stories. But seriously, these were not the normal stories that grandmothers and mothers told. They told stories about domestic violence and they told stories about rape and they told stories about well, deep, dark stories. And so that question, why was I fascinated with these themes is because from a very young age, she felt like she needed to survive. And so she was able to come to this conclusion. What does literacy mean? It means survival. And then she had to think what settings, because if you're going to tell a story, it has to be set in a place. And that needs details, showing, telling who mattered to her literacy, her mom, her grandmother, the school librarian, her first college writing teacher those have to be fleshed out as characters. She had to ask, who am I writing to? She was writing to writing teachers and she had to think, what does my audience think about literacy? They think it's reading and writing. How does what I think from that brainstorming differ from what they think? Well, she thinks literacy survival and all literacies matter. And so she has to think about how do I persuade this audience? What parts of my identity matter to this essay? She needed to talk about how she was poor and dyslexic, how she was female. But what parts of her identity matter to the audience? She's a poet, she's a writing teacher. And so all of that has to get formed into her story. So you see how she's got to make connections between disparate ideas. She's got to discuss internal and external reality. She's got to explain her thought process. She's got to counter audience assumptions. She's got to include surprising contexts in order to do that. So in the same way, you've got to let your questions produce questions. Don't go, not God, for the obvious answer. So what value do you want to focus on? Think about how you acquired that value, who you learned it from, where you were, what did you feel, how you define this value, how does my audience of Aztec first year students define this value? What does my audience believe about this topic? Those are some questions you're going to go for. Now, do you need research? Well, maybe you do. Bronson Koenig used research. Gloria Ansel Dua used research. Harriet McBride Johnson used research. Um, Jessica Harris used research. So did McBride. Um, James McBride in writing about Hip Hop Planet. What, do, what does research add? It helps you get details right when you don't already have those details. That makes helps you build um, credibility. It helps you add things you don't know um, so that you seem knowledgeable. It helps you make your points. It helps you support your stories. But you'll notice none of these authors started with research and then illustrated the research with stories. The point of the, the, point of the essay is the story but it builds the point. And so the research helps flesh out the story instead of uh, the opposite way. So you've watched this, you probably have questions. And now I'm gonna give you some details in writing about how you can get started with this essay. Again, send me questions. Ask them on the discussion, um, the Q&A discussion on Canvas so that everybody can have their answers. I'm sorry, a dog just came up and started asking to be loved. This one is not one of the lap dogs. This is an Aussie. Um, 
that's all I've got. I'll talk to you later. Bye.